everyone it is thursday april 11th 2023 welcome to big screens and tv streams live from the grand forks best source studios i'm dale joined alongside as always as mr victor how you doing sir good how are you guys doing man look at everyone yes. out there yes All you beautiful lovely people and <sighs> Producer Paul's in the booth. He'll be joining us momentarily here. Uh, join us live every other Thursday at 1 p.m. We want to hear what you guys have to say. We've got live chat open and rocking and rolling. So if you're watching on YouTube, Twitch, or Facebook, you could send us a question or a comment. We want to hear what you guys have to say or call or text them in, 701-213-0863. All kinds of ways to reach out and get a hold of us. Today's show is brought to you by the River Cinema 15 and the Shire Bar and Grill. Make them your go-to dinner and movie destination located in the East Grand Forks River Mall. You can either dine inside the movie memorabilia packed restaurant in the Shire. You can see some of their awesome memorabilia in the footage behind me. Or take your meal to go to the movie you're attending. Awesome a feature they have over there at the Shire. Some of this week's featured attractions are Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire, Monkey Man, Arthur the King, Kung Fu Panda 4, a special re-release of Shrek 2, the 20th anniversary edition opening tomorrow. And then also opening tonight with a couple sneak peek evening showings and then full rotation tomorrow, movie I'm personally very excited for, Civil War. We'll be talking oh, about yeah. it in the new releases portion of the show later on. But you can find the complete showtimes online, rivercinema15.com on their website. Don't forget about the Tuesday $5 matinees all day long and the senior matinee special every Wednesday and Thursday where it's $5.50 matinees. River Cinema has luxury recliners and is family owned and operated. So check them out, River Cinema 15 and the Shire Bar and Grill. Okay. All right. Victor, man, it seems like that summer movie season, I like, uh, we're going to be talking about it a little bit in our first re review here. That I, I don't know, Godzilla X Kong seems like kind of like the unofficial kickoff for it with the type of it got the type of publicity that's kind of saved for a, like a big summer blockbuster did it seem that way or is it just me honestly no it's it's just both of us here because honestly i, I know it's paul because heck that that movie was awesome as heck and we will be talking oh, yeah. about it. we'll we'll be sinking we'll be, our teeth into that we'll be discussing it a little bit got a couple opening news items here to talk about first like we always to kind of kick things off here uh so First news item here, I got, Victor, I got one from you, but the one I got is, and we actually actually covered this a little bit on Pixel Pros last mm. week since it's video game related. Oh, of course. But uh, they, uh, I believe it was Paramount, I may have got the studio wrong there, but uh, they announced that Sonic the Hedgehog 3 wrapped production, yeah. and uh, it will be nope. out just before Christmas on December 20th. Yes, and you are correct, it is Paramount. Paramount so, release? Yes. Okay, yeah, so uh, Sonic 2 was one of the few films of the COVID-19 era to, to, that had a bigger Ooh. opening than its predecessor. Mm. Huge, did huge, huge box, 
blockbuster uh, uh, box office. And you know, and the first one actually it came out like a month before COVID hit. I know a lot of talking to a lot of people, they said it was like the last movie they saw in theaters before uh, the pandemic. So. Uh, and Jim Carrey's returning. I know he was kind of teasing that Sonic 2 would have been his last movie, but he's back for Sonic 3. Yes, this will be his final last movie. And no, I uh, I take that back. Sorry. It's not Paramount. It's Universal. So you, Bar- Oh, is it Universal? Okay. Yes, it I'm is. I've actually seen my notes here. I'm, I kind of want to say I got it was Paramount's biggest three-day opening since 2014. But, you know, I could be wrong. So, mm. but... Uh, yeah, so, Victor, here's a news item from you. The much-speculated oh, Jon Snow spinoff series, uh, which was to serve as a sequel to Game of Thrones, is no longer in development. Uh, Kit Harrington, the actor who plays Jon Snow, confirmed this, uh, saying, uh, quote, uh, that currently it's off the table because we couldn't find the right story to tell that we were all excited about enough. So we decided to lay down tools with it for the time being. There may be a time in the future where we return to it, but at the moment, no, it's firmly on the shelf. Yes, um, sadly enough, uh, I'm I'm glad they kind of shelved this one because there wasn't really enough story to go off of on, on this one. Uh, this was, of course, uh, not counting the House of Dragons and, of course, you know, Game of Thrones, same name, respectively, of course. And uh, because Jon Snow and the eighth season, as you all, if you all watched Game of Thrones, the eighth season left us kind of high and dry, and it really wasn't, a, it really wasn't what I thought it was. It wasn't bad. The thing about it, what I was really concerned about was the whole objective was to get to Cersei. That was the whole objective of the show. And they just bleh. Yeah. And I, it was really ridiculous. I know we've talked about it on the show before how it wrapped up. Maybe it, just that last season, very underwhelming in certain regards. Uh, not that it was bad, but compared no. to the previous seasons, no. uh, it, the, the previous season set a high bar. But yeah. but I know there are still, you know, House of Dragons next season is still coming, and there's uh, other spinoff series still in the works, too, that uh, HBO and Max confirmed. Yes. I, I mean, I really would like to touch on Jon Snow because I like him as a character. I think he was really, really great character. Uh, uh, I love how he was a part of the Night's Watch, even though he was forced to be there and he didn't really want to be there, but he was like, their family was separating. They had no choice. Everybody was kind of just like, well, they would one day find themselves back to each other at one point. Um, I will say this, though. Uh, at the eighth season, of course, it was a treat for me. I don't know about the rest of you. It was a treat for me because the Glegane brothers... I knew that one day they would take on each other. It was only suckish because I wish the fight was a little bit longer, and I wish the brother uh, who was uh, in the fight really didn't turn into a zombie. Uh, I, and he was more subconscious of, you know, his hateful of his brother because the two of them, if you actually saw the show, um, I'm sure you all have, uh, one of the brothers, which is the Hound, as he is well known, uh, he has a huge like burn all over his right face. Yeah, and, great uh, character. Yeah, and of course, uh, the Mountain made that all possible. He hated his brother so much that he took his face and just burned it really to a yeah. crisp. And ever since then, like Frankenstein, he was just afraid of fire. Well, hey, maybe possible spinoff series uh, w- with him and with all these other spinoff series it's so many directions they can go and who knows maybe hbo will revisit it down the line so. i hope so because it's really but good we need to move things along with our first review of the show kind of we're teasing as being like the maybe first summer blockbuster we're talking about godzilla cross kong Ooh. the new empire or godzilla x kong you know i see that symbol used in video games uh i i hear it referred to as uh like tekken cross street fighter they use the x and they refer to it as cross have victor you you're way more plugged into it. do you hear what is there an official way of saying it technically it's godzilla and kong godzilla. like really it's, it's, it's just an my, x <laughs> it, it is an x but honestly you might as well just say godzilla and kong i, I figured it was times you know it's it, God, it, godzilla Oh, yeah. times kong you know because they're going into this huge battle together so it's true it's not just king kong it's godzilla times kong true but i don't know i i don't know why yeah, they just knows? put the x yeah, yeah. if they would have so, just put the x they would have been like then if they would have just done that they would have said oh well godzilla kong part five like so this is this this is a sequel here to the film that just came out a couple of years ago to the last godzilla and kong movie and this is te- technically the 38th godzilla film and the 13th king kong film yes very very prolific franchises here so uh here's the imd synopsis just to set it up for you guys set the table Two ancient titans, Godzilla and 
Kong clash in an epic battle as humans unravel their intertwined origins and connection to Skull Island's mysteries. So you get a lot of the returning cast from the first first film. I completely forgot almost all of them except for the the, the main live streamer. I'm okay. Yep, I remember him. He was he, he has a very he was kind of like the comic relief. Yeah, the worst part of the movie. Yes, unfortunately, a lot of his jokes were very. Cringeworthy. They brought back memories of the parts I did not like about the Michael Bay Transformer movies. His jokes, you know, maybe for the younger crowd they may have hit more, or for other people they may have hit more, but they were definitely, uh, definitely stood out as just. I'm like, oh no, here, here's another one. Here's another one. Yeah, I, I, I think once he. Oh, go ahead, Paul. Go uh, ahead. I was just gonna say if they, if they would have eliminated him from the movie, I think it would have been a lot better. No, I liked him. I mean, I Wait, know, did, did I know he was. You? I know he wasn't. You know, his jokes were kind of like, eh, it's okay. But you know, once he like. Once he had this human moments, you know, he was really like there. And it's like, all right, I like this guy. I think it was trying to appeal to kids. Yeah. He was. Let's face it. That was the vibe I got. Yeah. But or maybe they could have just found a way to balance it out a little more. Yeah. But, uh, you know, hey, they wanted with a direction. A uh, director, uh, I had his name right here. He directed the first one, uh, Adam Wingard. He directed, uh, he also directed VHS, The Guest, and, and You're Next. Next. Very good yeah. movies. Uh, um, I, I've heard great things about VHS. V- uh, very good. And You're Next and The Guest, very good movies as well. So, last film, I remember, the thing I remember the most about the first film was that epic, epic final battle where, where Kong and Godzilla put their differences aside and they took on Mecha Godzilla in an awesome CG just slugfest. Oh, that and was so, cool. I'm, I'm like, Paul and I were kind of joking before going into the film, you know, all right? There's probably going to be a dumb focus on the humans leading up to it, but at least in the end, we're going to get a big CG slugfest like the first one. Uh, For both of you, did you feel that that delivered on that aspect? No, I mean, it delivered and then some because the first part literally wasn't even the humans. They didn't even show the humans. It was just right to Kong and being chased by a whole yeah. bunch of monsters. Well, and then I was like, all right, we're getting into this. Well, it's like when we went into this, we, we already knew that, okay, the storyline is going to be stupid. Mm-hmm. There's going to be a lot of action. Of course. And it's going to be a roller coaster ride of just entertain, of entertainment. Oh, of course. And, it, and it delivered on all of that. Oh, yes. Was the movie great? No. <laughs> But was it entertaining? Yeah. <laughs> yes. It was yes. entertaining. Oh, five, five stars Absolutely. entertaining. And there was a lot of roaring. I think they could have I think they could have dialed down the roaring a little bit. No. I mean but they, they had to at least have maybe, roars. These, these are monsters. Yeah, <laughs> like they had to show their dominance there. It's like yeah. I'm the king here. But I will say this doesn't even hold uh like it's not even in the realm of Godzilla minus one. Yes, okay, yes, a God, thousand yes. percent. Yes. Godzilla thousand percent. minus one is a way better oh. Godzilla movie. Oh, of course, no yeah. question. Yeah. Like that it's, goes back to, to the old school. I, I feel bad because it came out just what, not even a year, or maybe just over a year ago. So a lot of people are thinking, you know, you get this very, very. Not only do you get like the the great Godzilla monster movie set pieces that we've the the brand has tried and true known for, you also get like a serious drama piece on top of it. And yeah. and they, they hit it out of the park on all, all fronts. But uh, on here, one, it's it's uh, the balance uh, is a bit off kilter. And it's like, uh, how many realms are they getting into? Because well, they just keep going, like, what was it? Like, they're in the, like, the fourth realm of... The Hollow Earth. Yeah, the Hollow, hollow Earth. Earth. So yeah. what, for people who may not be un- unaware, not Godzilla and Khan connoisseurs, they may care to elaborate on the hollow earth because i was I'm like what's this <laughs> and what did you what did you think of the uh you know the king kong uh oh you mean the scar king yeah what did you what did you think of him that, i mean that, i was, that, I, was, I, was I was kind of yeah the villain okay, i was to, i was a little iffy on that one to be fair and and i have to say this because I gotta tell you, I love apes. Like apes are. It should have been King so- Louis. It, yeah, that, <laughs> exactly, exactly. And and see, this was the really confusing part for me as the villain. Like Paul, I I thought it was really confusing because I love orangutans. They're one of my favorite species, like my favorite simian species of apes. They are so cool. They have long arms. They literally are the chillest ape species ever. They don't really mess with anyone unless someone's messing with them. And so. It kind of was confusing because, I mean, orangutans aren't really aggressive. So, I mean, you could have picked another. Not only that, but it was, like, really thin. Yeah, and he wasn't really, I mean, don't get me wrong. They're, they may be thin, but they're tough as shit. And they will throw you, like, a I, rag doll. I think, I think that they would have uh, had a better route if they would have made him a baboon. 
<laughs> because <laughs> it would have because probably. those are those are like scary fierce. Although you would have to deal with like the butt. Yeah, which yeah. kind of would which kind of would be a little yeah. harder to. That'd be, that'd be a giant ass. Yeah. Well, what did you guys make up? It was very interesting seeing Kong interact with this tribe of lost fellow Kong species that he interacts with, and there's cool, there's a few man. scenes in the movie where no dialogue, it's just body language and and various degrees of tonal roaring with each other. And at first, I'm like, oh, is, they're going for scenes with no dialogue, but no. those those few scenes in the film, I think by the end, I'm like, okay, I'm actually invested in these scenes and how he's kind of winning himself over with oh, this yeah. clan of of cons. I yeah. thought that was great. When and I'll tell you this. If any of you saw the original, and I'm talking about even the original like Kongs and Godzilla movies, those dudes rocked the suits. Those suits were badass and they were cool. But with this one, they took it to a whole new level. When they did it in the early 2000s, Andy Serkis, the great Andy Serkis, literally did motion capture. He not only did Kong for this version, but he did even Caesar for Planet of the Apes. All of the prequels for, uh, for Planet of the Apes. And the cool part about this one was this was what it needed to be. Kong was just, it didn't need any dialogue, didn't need anything. The body language, you know, the moving with the hands, the, the you know, the aggressive roar and the whole like, you know, smirk and saying like, all right, he can sit by me or you know, he could be like this, you know. Kind yeah, of thing. And, and they did make it so, you know, obviously Godzilla is the king of titans. You know, Fair. I mean, he's not but, the official king, but he's still he's still but there was something that I did notice in this movie. And it was kind of uh, upsetting to me. The kind of the, the villain Godzilla. I can't remember Star what Star King. Oh, was that it? No, 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 that, no, that was the the, oh, uh, the, uh, the ice one. Shimo. Yeah. Oh, the Shimo. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. Ca the cast, the, the ice so, age, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yep. when Kong first like meets that thing, when he brings it out, mm. like it's a big Titan. Mm like Godzilla, mm. but it almost is like bigger than Godzilla. Mm. But then there are other scenes where it's smaller than Godzilla yeah. and other scenes is bigger than Godzilla. So they, they didn't get the perspectives right yeah. on that thing, like throughout the entire movie. It was like at some points, like when he's right, like the Scar King was like riding it. Mm. It was like, okay, now it looks kind of little. Yeah. And then in another scene, it's like supposed to be like super gigantic. And yeah. then you got Godzilla fighting it. And all of a sudden, Godzilla looks small. Yeah. And then in the next scene, it looks like like small compared to King Kong. Yeah. It was like the consistency just wasn't there mm. as far as I... You know, as far as I could tell. Yeah. I, I mean, no, and I, I totally agree with you because the visual effects, I mean, and let me tell you, they were just all over the place because, mm -hmm. I mean, even when they were doing the gravity fight, I mean, you could just see, like like Paul said, I mean, when they were going at each other, it was just like, well, he was bigger than Godzilla. But when you look at Godzilla when he's on the ice uh, did, glacier, he's just, like, massive. He's got spikes coming out of, like, every dorsal of his body. Did you think, like, maybe it could have been, like, maybe some rushed lap this is only a two-year turnaround time and with that much cg involved in a two-year turnaround time do you think maybe some scenes could have been rushed a little bit and maybe they're they they're they only have so much time to follow up with continuity and maybe there could have been some oversights i mean did, did they give you that impression maybe? i don't but think on, they care on, but yeah. honest, it was just special effects overload I, I right. mean, and honestly let's face it you know uh, <laughs> the, when they made you know godzilla minus one i mean those guys you know tahoe house literally those guys did it for real. They, every morsel of the OG Godzilla, like they literally like must have gone through hours of color, imagery, everything, just to go back all the way from the original, just to get it perfect to a T. So I mean, honestly, Warner Brothers, they had the time, they had the, they had the skills, and I honestly think like that's just an excuse because if, these guys can make an incredible, it won a freaking Oscar, ladies and gentlemen. Like, minus one, won a freaking Oscar. Yeah, visual effects. Like, that was amazing. Well like, that was an amazing movie. If you, if you gotta see it. Heck, you go to oh, Japan yeah. Wait, and go hey, see it. Longtime viewers know it all ranked on our top 10 movies of the year list. And Beautiful. High, high, highly ranked. Yeah, and, so it could, but, like, honestly, the, they could have done better. And there was, there was kind of an upsetting part of the movie, too, when Kong was... You know when he's by the pyramids and he's trying to get Godzilla to uh, uh, yeah. go go into the you know into the oh uh, the portal yeah the portal, and Godzilla is about to attack him and he's like trying to tell him like no no yeah. I, I'm trying to get you to come here, mm -hmm. and it just made King Kong look like a bitch. 
No. Uh, you know, I mean, it really did. I mean, he was like, like he was afraid of him. You know, I wouldn't say he was afraid. And of then, him. and then, what was with the Iron Man arm? Yeah, like, what the gave, hell was that? It was that? like the uh, Elysium <laughs> attachment for Matt Damon there. But no, we're gonna we're gonna hulk you up here, and yeah, that was. That was, I, I mean, they made it seem like, you, you know, like, King oh, Kong we, doesn't have the strength advantage, so we need to kind of give them their equivalent of a steroid shot. Too. Yeah, yeah, not only that, but, oh, we just happen to have this, like, one arm that's been in development that just happens to be here at this, and, oh, it, it's just his hand that just happened to get hurt. Was it the right hand, the left hand? Oh, did they have both? No, yeah. no, they just had that one. It was like, you know, uh... Deus Ex Machina. No, mm-hmm. no what was, uh... No, they would have. They would have literally. No, it was uh, uh, Age of Ultron or whatever, where he brings down the the suit to try to battle the Hulk. Oh, you mean the Hulkbuster suit? Yeah, yeah, that's basically all it was. It was the Hulkbuster suit, but it was just like for his hand. I'm like, man, this is just (laughs) like cheesy. Come (laughs) on. We we should probably wind this down here. Keep things moving along. Final thoughts: Godzilla, X Kong, better than the first one, or still? Hey, it's a popcorn movie through and through. Just go in and enjoy yourselves. Uh, Final thoughts: Just enjoy yourself. It's it's fun. Just it's fun. So I mean, go enjoy yourself. Minus one is the best. It is. Godzilla, King of Monsters, is the second. Mm. This one is just... Somewhere I mean, in the pack. <laughs> it's it's just one of the collection. I mean, yeah. you know, if you're bored, put it on. Yeah, just bit. fill it enjoy in. The, enjoy the surround sound, yeah. the special effects. Just kind of have laundry movie it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, Just uh, to fill it in the collection. Paul, I have yeah. to ask, I know me, you, and your daughter, Ivy, saw it. It sounds like she's starting to become the, the monster movie uh, fan. Uh, how is she? How is her thoughts on it coming out of it? Oh, yeah, she loves the Titan movies. I mean, to see the mo- those movies, the, the, are these movies monster movies, Titan movies, with the, you know those ch- innocent childhood eyes, uh, to, to go back to that age, you know? <laughs> And this is one of those movies that you really do need to see in the theater. Yeah. Otherwise, yes. you, you know, you, 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 you lose out on the, the Titan aspect of it. Yeah. I'm, I am glad I saw it in the theater. I'm probably, uh, I'm kind of in the middle on it, maybe middle leaning down, but there are moments I talked about that I legitimately enjoyed and other parts where I'm with you, you know, just big, dumb, goofy, slugfest fun. Uh, definitely see it in the theaters or, or at least a good surround sound home theater set up and, and, you should at least have a have, have a good time just taking oh, it yeah. in for what it is. But and yeah. lots of roaring. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I will say a lot of the roaring. It, this There's is no joke about yes, that. Yes, this is an interesting disparity. Uh, critic Rotten Tomato aggregate fifty four percent, which is actually higher than I thought it would be. I thought that's it would be what, a little lower. Actually. That's what that's what I said. But so, uh, but so. audience is really high ninety two percent. So oh, wow. yeah. Okay. So there you go. Uh, well, I'll be damned. So <laughs> we are going to uh, move things along here. Uh, I, actually, I think we'll push this uh, next ad break back here just a little bit here. We're going to do our special feature segment here. Uh, so we were going to do this last episode, but we decided to save it for this this week here. Our, actually, I think, oh, no, wait. Yeah, actually, yeah, Victor, we'll save the, uh, your segment here for after this. Oh. Uh, this is our director's chair segment. Paul, you had this great idea oh. here where we all should just pick a director at random and uh, and just a couple movies from their repertoire. We don't have to go through their movie by movie library, but like just two or three. We could. <laughs> yes, we could. But in the in the interest of time, yes. we're just gonna pick two or three, just a couple quick highlights, and just have a fun conversation while we kind of nerd out about. Doesn't have to necessarily be our favorite director, but just a one random one we want to spotlight. Some that they've either had a lot of love or a little love. Uh, Victor, I will throw it to you first oh, to kick things yeah. off for us. Who is your directorial pick for our initial director's chair segment? Now, to be fair, I mean, this Nothing. this was really hard because I've got a lot, and I mean a lot. And being a movie buff, I got I to tell you, I, I can name every director off the top of my head. But, I, I, and I love them all, man, I do, but no, no one compares to the OG himself. The man, the myth, the legend, God rest his soul, Stanley Kubrick. Stanley Kubrick was the man as as jack nicholson said when you come onto his set everybody acknowledges he is the man and i still think that underrates him to this day there is no filmmaker who has made more of an impact upon cinema and who's had more freedom as a director quite like stanley kubrick what's his what's his top movie top movie 2001 a space odyssey Okay. That was literally the godsend of. I think, what, I, I think we watched that in school, I want to say. Yeah. That was what, like, that cut, literally. Man, literally, Ape, 
throws a bone up into the air, and that fucking cut, man, just right to the space center. How old were you when you first saw it? Oh, man, I was, oh, I had to be in my... I had to be in my teenage years when I first saw that. There, what, what other movies has well, he made? If, he if is, I could throw one in, uh, there was a Stanley Kubrick movie I probably saw when I was like 16, 17 for the first time, and it did a number on me. I'm I'm talking about Full Metal Jacket. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. Gosh. I yeah. Wanted, I wanted to be the Again, first one. I, I think if it probably sh- influenced so many people on oh. what uh, boot camp was for oh, everyone. That, that drill sergeant. Oh, my Ar- Lord. Arlie Han- who is actually a real gunnery sergeant, mind you, ladies and gentlemen. Mm-hmm. He was. Oh yeah, that's know. yeah, that's a fact. Yeah, he is a real life gunnery sergeant, and he didn't play. <laughs> Victor, I'm sorry I jumped in. What's your other uh, uh, Stanley Cooper? No, Cooper's no, pick? please. Like I said, I can talk about this man all day. Uh, one, uh, one of my favorite, my other favorite one was literally. I remember uh, was Clockwork Orange. That was one of the most controversial films ever. Not only did that spawn a lot of gang, of real life gangs, but it got so bad that Stanley Kubrick had to like get rid of the film from distribution because not only were his inspiring real life gangs, but like his family were literally getting death threats. What the, let, let it, let it cool off a little bit. Oh yeah. Like literally like ever since that movie came out, it's still one of the most controversial movies and it's still removed from British distribution because of how much hate it got. All these years later. Oh yeah. Wow. Wow, Victor. And his, and his daughter can literally tell oh, you because she's a documentary filmmaker. Great pick. Stanley Kubrick, uh, a final sentence or two to just uh, for why he was your, your pick here in our initial director's chair. I, I honestly, w- and I got to tell this story really quick because this is one of my favorite film stories ever, was when, uh, speaking of Full Metal Jacket, because it's one of my favorite, Vincent D'Onofrio, who was in it, he was a very young man when he did this movie. Kingpin. He, literally. He literally uh, asked Stanley because uh, the Warner Brothers executives were coming to observe the film. Um, and, of course, he asked, he's like, well, uh, where are the Warner Brothers executives? He's like, in that van over there he's like are they going to ever get out of the van they will when i'm done with this shot <laughs> and that just shows how much power that man had warner brothers couldn't say shit about him yeah. that's how much power he had any other director the uh, studio execs would be like hey go home <laughs> oh yeah but stanley stanley didn't he he didn't yell he didn't shout he even told a dp when he was young he said i don't want you to ever ever move that camera ever again I want you to put it back where it was. And he didn't shout. He didn't yell. He just told him that. And the guy did it. And this was a professional. Of, he of, was even a fresh Just show. like, a, just like a, a soft but firm tone yeah, where just a firm they have a don't mess with me voice. Yeah. And he just like, he oh. absolutely did it. All right. Well, I will I will go next here. Go uh, I this, this is a little tongue-in-cheek p- pick for myself because uh, I, I kind of ha- glommed on to this director because none of his movies are legitimately good. He's kind of like a modern day, uh, Victor, I kind of gave you a couple clues to him on our lap, off air uh, a couple weeks ago, and you were able to guess him. I was like, oh, of course, Victor would get him. Uh, I love him. So tongue in cheek uh, director, uh, his movies are almost universally panned, okay. uh, but he's kind of known in circles. Uh, he did, a, I want to say it was like 10 or 11 video game movies, and they were all awful. <laughs> Some are kind of fun entertainment cheek tongue-in-cheek can't be bad but for the most part they're just straight up bad and not even rewatchable bad they're just bad but uh i'm talking about uva bowl uva bowl the german <laughs> director he only he, he got the right to make all these video game movies because he made the the original house of the dead movie and I that that did okay that. enough box office for horror movie standards at the time that uh, a few other horror video game franchises, not really top notch ones, but uh, signed on with them. I'm like, okay, yeah, House of the Dead did decent movies, and so he signed all these deals to make all these other video game movies, yes. and they were all so bad. But studios kept going with them because by the time that these next movies came out and got really bad box office and critical numbers, uh, it was too late. He already signed deals to make like another seven or eight movies, and they couldn't back out of them. So so the studios gave them bad press and they didn't market them at all and they all did horrible box office and i brought i brought a couple of visual aids uh i won't oh, hey, about the visual aid? I, I only own a, i own a few of them here but uh did so, you bring blood do you bring blood, blood rain? rain yes i know yes. you bring blood rain. christina loken <laughs> and he actually got big name talent uh christina loken uh I ben kingsley know. i don't uh, know how ben kingsley like yeah. literally how much He's money a did king. that do? like literally how much the, did they have to pay oh, wait, that no. man <laughs> or no is he in blood rain or dungeon siege no he's, in blood, blood rain. Rain. Okay, he's yeah. in blood rain yeah so yeah this was a big flop 
Big, big, big flop. They they tried. This is the one where people are like, no, nope, we got to stay away of Uva Ball. This is bad. And then they did two straight to video sequels, which were also not not good. But I guess it has its fans, kind of tongue in cheek, bad fans. But uh, everyone was just kind of like, stay away from this guy. Uh, and then she did uh, look kick ass in that outfit, though. Then here, in the name of the King, a Dungeon Siege t Tale, he's got Jason Statham. Uh, again, it got big theatrical release but it did horrible box office this is kind of like his take on terrible yeah Shit. this is kind of like really his big opus <laughs> really his big opus of making a big epic uh lord of the rings type movie on uh, based on the dungeon siege franchise and uh, he actually has some other uh what was his name uh the uh, Hellboy. Uh, oh, Ron Perlman. Yeah, yeah Ron he Perlman's got. I don't know. I, yeah. I don't even know how he got Ron yeah. Perlman. He's got. He's got all this big name talent in here, and I think Christina Loken is in here too, in a smaller role in here, supporting role. I guess she liked Uva Bull, but uh, that's what I never understood about. And his you know, films. this is actually kind of semi okay, which is glowing praise on the Uva Bull scale. Not great, but just kind of semi okay i give it two percent yeah <laughs> but uh yeah but again this is only two hours but it's probably way too long and by this point uh, i believe there's a special feature in here or maybe on this next one where uva bowl is getting such a bad reputation by critics that he challenges his we critics to a boxing yeah to a match. boxing match for for charity but uh so, so and, and several critics actually took him up on it because uva bowl actually has a legit uh, golden glove background in boxing he's actually a legit proven fighter and so he shot all these videos you can find them on youtube and they're even a behind the scenes extra in a couple of these movies on dvd where he's just knocking the crap out of the, all of these critics in the ring you know they went through a mini boot camp to train but they're wearing headgear but they're he's just wiping the floor with them it was so uh, funny. there's only so you hear all the time that you know all, all the all the directors that get panned if i had a couple minutes in the ring with these critics well Uva Bull actually did, did and, yeah. and and by the end of it the critics actually you know it's funny we we're interviewing some uh fighters here on GFBS on a recent show and they're talking about having mutual respect and the, and the critics were like hey Uva Bull who power to you <laughs> but uh you then, really knew his stuff man and he then the last one this is an interesting release Postal oh, so do you guys oh, remember yeah. the first person shooter Postal where you play as Gary Coleman uh, yeah. It's like very, very risque, very, very satirical. Really pushed the envelope. But uh, the postal, they got, they made a movie out of it. And there's a very, this is only came out. I want to say like not even six or seven years after 9/11. It opens with a very pushing the envelope 9/11 joke, and they just go all over it. I believe about Dave Foley or or Jack, is it Jack Foley or Dave Foley? Dave Foley. Yeah, Dave Foley. Uh, they do some interesting stuff with him. Uh, it's, it's about a postal worker who goes postal. And they, they try to push the envelope with all kinds of just risque humor and comedy. Uh, there are actually a couple interesting zingers. It's like they throw so much paint on the wall, eventually a little bit of it sticks. But it's, yeah, just pretty raunchy. Uh, again, maybe a laundry movie in the background. Have some laughs. But these are just three of about a dozen movies Uva Bowl did. Uh, he, he also did, I think, yeah, he did two sequels to... Uh, uh, to I think in the name of the king two worlds another video game franchise he did a far cry movie that ubisoft uh did not want to publicize at all and they made sure that I just saw it on netflix streaming one day very very low budget for you know far cry high budget first person shooter game and then and he did a, like alone in the dark he did a movie on that and and a handful of others i want to say it was about a grand total of 10 or 11 uh movies you guys, does any of these movies ring a bell that I ranted about? For oh, a little I, bit? I knew all. Nope. I, oh, nope. I knew I, I knew all of them basically, and it was funny even, that. Well, the original was, House of the Dead actually got a little bit of buzz, and Blood Rain did. did too. But these are, I get, these are like pushing twenty-year-old movies now. Well, and and like I said, I didn't want to like you know come in when I when you were telling about the boxing thing because I honestly was like, dude, I I respect him for that. I mean, he takes on his critics, and what I loved about his movies uh because they were not so bad that they were good kind of movies yeah. but they were just bad they were really bad but see how but bad I, they can get it's like all right let's just see how bad this can get oh absolutely yeah. but but what I, I what i couldn't understand about this man and i still it's don't like a modern day, day ed wood almost yeah like almost. literally <laughs> like I, I couldn't understand how he got all these incredible yeah, talented these people actors. like ron perlman jason statham yeah. like he has connections <laughs> even ben kingsley ben kingsley won an oscar for sexy beasts like he's an incredible actor how the oh, hell gosh. did he get this but incredible yeah. actor? Uva Bowl, like, Uva Bowl, that's my inaugural pick for our director's chair segment. Paul, very curious to see. I know you've been oh, doing your, your study and he's very got a curious list. for your pick. He's, oh, got, he's got a, got a list. list. <laughs> yeah, well, like, well, no, I had to look him up because I don't generally know the directors of movies. I just watch enough. the movies. Fair enough. And so I had to figure out which uh, directors made which movies. Fair enough. And it was a really hard decision to try to come to the, the director that I think is 
possibly the the best one that's out there. Fair enough. Because so James Gunn, Guardians of the Galaxy is like one of my favorite movies. It is really good. I mean, you know, so like to have him be my favorite director. That's fair. Would yeah. that's what you would think because that's like my favorite, like one of my favorite movies. Of course. But I can't go with him. Also, Steven Spielberg. Oh, I mean, I saw Dra- I saw Jurassic Park probably sixteen times in the theater when it came out. Oh, classic! But I had to I had to try to do this on uh, a more of a I don't wouldn't say an intellectual level, but uh, like looking at the span of things. So. I have to go with James Cameron. Oh, I knew it. Wow. I knew it. I knew it. I knew and, it. And, there, God, and it. there is a reason for I'm that. <laughs> there is a reason for that. Okay. For one, Avatar yes. was astounding. Oh, yeah. Alita yeah. is just a, a, just an entertaining movie altogether. I think that they're coming out with a sequel to it now, which I've been waiting for for years. You and me both. That, that's at that huge CG standards oh, for yeah. the, when it hit. Yeah. yeah. And then, but you look at so like that's why I didn't go with James Gunn because he has got you know he's got Guardians of the Galaxy, Suicide Squad, Dawn of the Dead, Thirteen Ghosts. Those are all kind of like in a in a niche category. Mm. But then you have James Cameron that has Avatar, but then he also made Titanic. Yes. And Titanic is just like totally, uh, you know, away from that that style of uh, movie that you would think. And oh, it was yeah. a whole and, different spectrum. Yeah, that and, was and, one of the most expensive movies that man ever made. And he did it with his own budget, no, mind you. No, granted, I, you know, I'm not a huge fan of Titanic as far as, you know, the DiCaprio love story thing. Oh, of course. But the the way that he made the Titanic come to life oh, yeah. in the movie and the, was astounding. And the oh, whole yeah. shipwreck scene. Yep. Oh, yeah. I'm kind of the same way on Pearl Harbor. I'm like, okay, lovey dovey first 70% of the movie. But when it comes time for the bombing scene, yeah, I'm, I'm with that exactly on Titanic. Yep. But there is one that just really set it off. And it's because it, it there have been so many movies that have taken off from this movie and so many ways that it, the storyline has been completely, you know, shifted throughout the years. Can you name it? If we're Ter- if if we if I was we just gonna say Terminator. Yeah, sorry, sorry, yeah. If we're gonna say Terminator. Terminator. Yeah, yep. Terminator. Terminator. Original. Ter- yep. Because we had this discussion on this show before. Ladies we're and we're dealing with AI right now. And Terminator. This came out. And what was it like, eighty six or something? The, the first one came out in eighty, and then the other one came out in ninety two. So and yeah, I mean, that is revolutionary stuff oh, right there. Oh, so yeah. I I gotta give it to James Cameron. James oh yeah, Cameron. Woo. And you also got to give it to my man who is no longer living anymore, Mr. Stan Winston. That man had animatronic gold written all over him. He not only did this movie, Terminator 2, and, of course, the first Terminator, but he did Jurassic Park as well, um, which is, of course, he who, of course, Paul named uh, Steven Spielberg, of course. That man did that movie justice, so, and it was kick-ass. Hopefully, we enlightened your eyes here to some great, great movies here. Hey, people in the chat watching now or after the fact, uh, we want your recommendations for your favorite director or just a random director you just like, want to give some love to, shed some light on. We want to hear in the chat. We want, to, we want to give some movie recommendations or hear some movie recommendations from you so we could get a bowl of popcorn ready yes. and enjoy some awesome, awesome cinema. And we got it. To, and honestly, if you can, please someone talk Wes Anderson. That man's panning, dude. Oh, my God. God, I love that man. His panning is just... His movies are like theater, and that's all the, what they are, is theater. But. All right. Yes. Good Victor, go. well, I'm going to throw it to you here next. I know you got some updates for us here. It's time for your latest Marvel, DC, and other comic book uh, movie news and uh, other entertainment properties. Oh, guys, I got a, I got a wallet for you today because, man, oh, man alive. It appears that uh, some people, when they star in superhero movies... Yeah, yeah, they get a little get a little money, get a little big for their britches at times. But apparently, Miss Kristen Dunst, if you all don't know who that is, uh, she had a very promising career in her younger years, you know, with movies like Bring It On, Melancholia, uh, Virgin... Wimbledon. Su- yes, Wimbledon, uh, Virgin Suicides. Um, Interview with a Vampire. Oh, yes, absolutely. When she was young, Interview with a Vampire, I mean, she was killing it. 
Original in, MJ. Oh, literally. And she not only killed it in those movies, but she was going ham in the, and you know what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen, in the 2000 Spider-Man movies. She literally killed it as MJ. But apparently she didn't think so when she was in her early 20s. She wrote a report to Vanity saying she got underpaid and she wasn't very happy about the pay gap. Just now, recently? Yep, wow. she wrote it back, uh, yeah, back not even too long ago. She talked about, yeah, when I was in my 20s, I didn't know very well and you know i just i wanted to see what kind of movie it was you did know better kirsten okay it the movie's not called spider woman let me mind you ladies and gentlemen really quick when you star in a movie that is really big like this one okay the movie is not about you it is about spider-man okay and toby mcguire is spider-man he's going to get paid more because he is the star so he got paid millions literally the first was million the so other two made billions after that. So he was making twice that amount yeah. as he was back then. So I mean, James Franco, he's like, well, I'm I'm a supporting actor. I can't I can't help that. He's the star. I'm the supporting yeah. actor. And that's what Kirsten Dunst needs to know. She is the supporting role. She's gonna get lower pay unless the movie's called Kirsten. Well, sorry. Um, but yeah, she is now been any interesting fallout from that. Or? Um, it, it was actually to be, uh, to follow up on that. She actually said, well, I'm going to star in another superhero movie because apparently you make billions of dollars just starring in these. Yes. And no, you don't. <laughs> um, apparently she forgets when you do star in them, there's only a certain amount of percent. You will get money from these superhero movies. Uh, this is because unless you're a big name actor, much like Chris Hemsworth, who got paid billions for all his Thor movies, as well as many of the Avengers movies he starred in, you're probably going to see like, I want to say like, five percent of that cut if anything so i mean you will get paid don't get wrong you will get paid just not as much as other people who have been in this franchise longer yeah than i'm you. sure she's really struggling yeah and that's what i'm saying I, i'm saying the same thing you're not struggling honey you you did a bunch of movies that were great heck you did a movie called dick which was about the the evil man himself nixon so i mean you were paid a bunch of money for that movie so you should have no problem making money that you did and you're you're starring in a new movie right now civil war it's been years since she's like done a movie and she's doing an independent movie so yeah, it's one of those on. things where I, I probably i probably need to see the numbers to see how much she got paid versus he got paid to see what the gap is there's a mile in my mind where i'm thinking all right you know she she played a noteworthy role in, in those movies she was a big part but you know yeah. obviously peter parker to, was the main attraction yes but to be fair Dan, like the <laughs> she wasn't even in the movie that much in fact more i want to say like 40 percent he was in it 90 percent because right, it was right. about him oh yeah so i mean you're it's, really and, and i'm being generous with the number oh, not only that but has chris uh kirsten dunst ever acted uh as anybody other than kirsten dunst yeah. she's she's J like she's like denzel washington to me she's just the same oh, person we've, 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 whoa whoa whoa, 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 whoa. We now, 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 we, now we're getting to the dangerous territory here we're getting to dangerous territory <laughs> we're getting to dangerous territory here. Wait, wait, no, Denzel we already, Washington Paul, is a respectable Paul, man. Paul is trolling us. We, we've, had, I, we've had this. We've had that yes, rundown yeah, before. I, I but, know. Uh, I know. We Victor, are. we should move on. Any other updates for us? Yes. Um. Again, Batman's birthday again, man. Because heck, they're celebrating another 80th anniversary of the Batman, of course. Because Batman's kick ass, dude. And come on, he's the Batman. And they're also talking about a new animated feature with the Batman Beyond friend. Hey. So oh yeah, that was that was a great series for a day. That kind of got overlooked a little bit. Oh, so. absolutely, and it's going to be a movie very soon. They they're kind of just inching at it. They say, why don't we have a Batman Beyond movie? Well, without the gate. You know, great Kevin Conroy, it's kind of hard to do it. But they have already cast a live action movie already in the works. Uh, not only that, but The Man of Steel, they already released it at Comic Con 2024. They already released the symbols and everything. They haven't released the trailer yet. I'm sure they will release the teaser trailer pretty soon. And not only that, but Fantastic Four is getting a lot of love. And man, it's just piling up. And I got to give it to Todd Phillips because, again, he's hitting us with another joke movie and oh. this time harley quinn is going to be by his side but who's playing the lovely harley quinn well lady gaga is going to be uh, playing jo joaquin it. phoenix uh re returning yes he is oh, he's hey. going to be playing and i can always see paul's face <laughs> saying oh god oh, you didn't like go. him as a, oh, oh that's right you didn't like him as a joker right no uh, we'll see what he can do yeah. 
I thought he brought a whole new twist to it. I mean, I, I'm all for having different perspectives on different characters there. I thought he he, he won an Oscar for it. He <laughs> did a great job as the Joker. Now we'll see if Lady Gaga can deliver. I just watched it. I just watched it again recently, and I'm still having a hard time. But you know, I mean, like you said, that was the you know the very beginning stage of him. Mm you know, becoming the Joker. So we'll see if he becomes the mastermind that he's supposed to be in the mm. second one. And Lady Gaga, sometimes she surprises me. Mm. But I think that they're just going to try to make it to, I don't know, like, I don't see her as Harley Quinn. Like, she doesn't have that peppy personality. Yeah, I well, don't think so either. But, but. but she might be able to, to pull it off. She has. Uh, you know, so we'll see what happens. I don't have, like, high hopes for this but i might be surprised you never know and they yeah. and they said that it might turn into a musical i don't a know musical. for it like wow. i again these are just rumors just speculation. and speculations <laughs> yes ladies and gentlemen so don't get your hopes I, high I, up. I didn't like the whole laughing thing that they did in the first one where he's like i have a condition where i have to laugh oh like, right yeah well it's well, <laughs> stupid Come well, on. To, to, to be fair uh the, uh for those of you who don't know really quick this movie was in development hell uh, Martin Scorsese was actually supposed to be directing this movie with Leonardo DiCaprio as the Joker himself. However, that got scrapped and he did silence. So that was a whole thing. So Todd Phillips came in and said, okay, we're going to do this whole thing, kind of like the killing joke and stuff. Now, the only thing I had to say about this was that was the clown epidemic. And you all know what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen, the clown epidemic, where all people dressed up as clowns like Pennywise and all that and started killing people. Now, I don't think that was necessary, but you know, people, once the trend goes, goes off everything just keeps going forward yeah. well, and victor any yeah. other comic updates for us here um i'm also gotta say uh for this one uh this one's really gonna be special because man oh man alive uh man th this new so uh what was it this new uh world war uh z kind of thing where ninja turtles literally are facing the undead and that was kick-ass it's a new uh, it's a new online game actually where the teenage union turtles take on the living dead or the undead in this case uh and because there has been living dead but uh but they're just taking on zombies and they're still they're badass wow. funny ah, zombies are overdone they can be but uh if you know how to do them right like george a romero kick ass to that guy oh, man. Like, oh, oh victor I don't know. You do not write any of this down. You, just, you have this memorized. I'm surprised I can rattle off these several things. Boom, 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 boom. Like I said, man, I love it. Oh, and to be to really quick, to be fair, I, I also uh, I made a goof on uh, what I said to you before. Um, Sonic is actually Paramount. Uh, it's not Universal. I was thinking of another franchise that was Universal, so that's my fault, ladies and gentlemen. It is Paramount. Uh, and if you don't know if it is Paramount, uh, you can look on uh, the first movie where literally Sonic is going around the ramp, oh, and right. you can see all the rings on there. So I was like, no, wait, that is that is Paramount. What am I talking yeah, about? The rings replace the stars in the mountain logo. Yes. Yep. And like I said, I was... <laughs> hey, I was it's about... You've seen, Victor, you've seen so many countless movies that they're bound to get a a few wires mixed up. Right? Like I said, man, movies all day in this right. head. So yeah, a bunch of Paramounts, well, and a lot of universes. We still got a lot so. more show to come here, but before we do, we got to make sure to give some love to our next sponsor, CNH Insurance, where they began with the goal of building an agency with the highest of principles, personalized attention, and service. They strive to give everyone who walks through their door special attention and the best customer service possible. It's their priority, and their agents have over 50 years of combined insurance experience, and they're licensed in North Dakota, Minnesota, and even Arizona, too. So for all your insurance needs, give Justin, Jody, or Tammy a call at 218-773-0287 or stop by their offices at 1427 Central Avenue Northwest in East Grand Forks. Hey, we here at GFBS Insurance through CNH Insurance. Maybe you should, too. Why do I feel like this is like a law office commercial where a guy should just come out and says, has this ever happened to you? You're entitled <laughs> hey, to compensation. CNH has your hookup. Hey, the, right. the guys uh, at CNH, uh, they are awesome. They have always been totally on point with everything that I ever need. Fair like, enough. I remember you've went there a few times, you know, just being here at GFBS over the I, years. Where all they, I got to do is I, I, I just make a call to Justin, <laughs> takes care of it, yeah. just like right. that. I, yeah, get C a hold of, get a hold of CNH. They they are definitely the place to go to. 
Fair two, enough. 218 773 0287. There you go. Fair enough. Going to move things along here. Paul, I wish I had a chance. I wanted to see the first episode of this. This past week has just mm-hmm. been uh, go, go, go. So I haven't, but I did at least watch the trailer and I, I, I looked up a couple of uh, quick articles on it to get the basics here. Mm. So big new Netflix series that is just dominating the Netflix viewership charts. We're talking about Three Body Problem, streaming right now on Netflix. Here's a synopsis for it. A fateful decision made in 1960s China reverberates in the present where a group of scientists partner with a detective to confront an existential planetary threat. Um, do you like sci-fi? Mm-hmm. Oh, of course. Okay, see, my wife would hate this show because hmm. she doesn't like sci-fi. Not a sci-fi person. Who, who, she would not like Dune. Anybody, sci-fi. anybody that likes sci-fi, this is your go-to. Oh, hell yeah. This show is awesome. I mean, there are so many things about... I, like, I don't want to like have spoilers talking about this Fair show. Enough. But, yeah, I mean, I, I finally... I, I wasn't happy with the wrap-up of the season. Mm. I'm not going to lie. But... Like, I, I, as soon as you get to, like, episode six, you're just going to be like, whoa. Is this, is this a one-and-done season limited series, or is this, like, there, no, there's, there's going to be a season two? There, yeah, there's going to be a season two. I, there better be a season two. Well, I saw but, based I off, like, one of the most popular best-selling books in China. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, it's sold millions of copies in China, one of their best-selling books yeah, in, in decades. Yeah, so hmm. I, I can kind of give you the premise of it. Uh, uh, we reach out, we send a signal to... Uh, you know, try to make first sit, contact, make first contact. And then we get a, a response back and it says, you're lucky that uh, I received this because I'm a pacifist. Oh. Do not respond to this communication. Otherwise, uh, just don't be a, a waste. You're, you're, yeah, your your civilization will end. Oh. And the lady responds back. Humanity or humanity can't save itself. We need you to. So she responded. What like a dumbass. Wow. Oh, no. <laughs> like like the you... curious scientist wanting to examine that uh, in Halo to spread the, the flood infection. We have yep. this one. Yep. And so then they get into, um, so these aliens, they, they're sending over this technology, which is way more advanced than we have. And it kind of gets into like the virtual reality world. But when they're, in the, when they're in the virtual reality world, it's like... Like you're there. It's not like our virtual reality. It's like you're actually like on the planet, which and cool. <laughs> and they they kind of go through a series of games, hmm. um, and what they're doing is their civilization is coming to an end, hmm. and so they need to come to Earth, but it's going to take them four hundred years to get here. <laughs> but they but they've seen that our track of how we progress as as a civilization that we will be way more advanced than them in 400 years when they arrive. So they want to try to figure out how to kill our technology so that when they do arrive, that we won't be able to defeat their military. So it's a very interesting story. Sounds about right. Well, I saw, (laughs) it sounds like there's so many in depth, like just like, just, arcs where this can just uh just uh expand and kind of spider web out from yeah. and and the way you just kind of elaborated on that it got me I, I, one of my notes for this was i saw it's from one of the main game of thrones creators uh yes. david uh B- B- benioff am i pronouncing that right yes, or, okay. yes sure so yeah, ben, and, benioff so there you go <laughs> yeah and i mean the special effects are awesome i, I get i mean don't watch this with your kids in the room because mm-hmm. it gets pretty graphic mm-hmm. but you know i mean there, so there's like a cult following of people that think that these you know, aliens are, you know, like our new God hmm. because they're going to come over and they're going to take over our civilization and make, you know, humanity better where there's the other ones that are saying, no, they're going to come in, they're going to annihilate us all. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know it's, it's an alien movie. Yeah. You know? <laughs> they're not wrong. I was trying to, does this primarily take place in China or does it kind of hop around a bit? or is it Oh, just... no, it's the entire globe. Yeah. It's and. Like I said, like if you get, I think it's episode six. Once you hit that mark, you're, you're like uh, Oblivion with, I think it was Oblivion with Tom Cruise. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. I yep. love that movie. So I hate it when alien movies are just about like seeing E.T. 
Yeah. This yeah. is not an E.T. movie. This is like an Oblivion movie. Because one of the best things about Oblivion is at the very end, all it is is this big triangle in space. Yeah. You know? Is. So this is one of those type of sci-fi movies. Mm-hmm. And it goes More into, about the journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, you know, it goes into a lot of, you know, things that technology could be in theory realistic. I don't know. I mean, just watch it. It's it's good. Streaming on Netflix. Look like it's yeah. doing good on the the critic aggregate numbers. Eighty percent critics, seventy nine percent audience. And I know there's a another uh, host from one of the other GFBS shows in the studio saying, "I got a new show, dude. That's it. I'm all about. It. I got to talk to you about it." And and I, all signs just was thinking. You know, I bet it's three body problem because that's what Paul's all about. It just hit. He's sure enough. You, you and him just kind of nerded out for it for a little bit there. It was I, great. I yeah. mean, hell, dude. I mean, Victor, has this been on your radar? I mean, yeah, man. I haven't gotten to see it like like Dale. I've been so super busy, but I wanted to see this. Everyone was talking about it. I'm like, all right, I gotta see this now because I mean, I love freaking sci-fi, as you know. It's one of my favorite genres, and I mean, Paul already hyped it up enough. So I mean, I gotta I find time. To my to list. See. Yeah, I gotta find time to watch it. And like so. X Files said, the truth is out there. So. Well, Victor, something you did see is our next movie on the agenda here. We're talking about Imaginary. Ooh. And I remember, I was like, what's this movie about again? And I, when I was doing my info for it, I pulled it up. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. This is the Haunted Teddy Bear movie. Yes. So hit theaters a few, few weeks back. It's about a woman returns to her childhood home to discover that the imaginary friend she left behind is very real and unhappy she abandoned them <laughs> oh dude yeah he he, he was pissed <laughs> like he was pissed like if you think like if you see that Th- very this is not ted no this not- is not not even close like ted, ted was funny and nice but you know but this guy no he's pissed like he is pissed that he got left behind and you don't want to leave an imaginary friend behind he will not let you live it down so th- this movie was incredible like blumhouse i mean yeah Bl- they're Bl- they're they're raising their profile right up there with A24 in recent years. Oh, absolutely. Years. I mean, Universal, dude, they just kill every freaking time. And they, like, Blumhouse was no exception to this. They literally did this movie incredible. The the, the effects in here, just like, there was no CGI. There was just practical, and I love the practical effects. I, I don't want to go really? into it. Oh, yeah. There was practical effects in there. If you see people in... No CGI. No. There was no CGI. Just, just the glowy can, eyes on the teddy bear? No. no or or there, is that all practical, no, too? No. No. There was no glowy eyes. There was no anything. There was actual practical effects. You'll see it in there. Um, and I and I got to give it to them, dude. They weren't faking it. They were really doing it for real. I thought they were going to be like, oh, here's the practical jump scare. You know, the, the, the visual jump scares and all this other... Uh, okay, we've well, seen it before. I was going to ask, guys. I, I saw the trailer and it had me thinking like okay this looks like it's hitting the check boxes here with like kind of like a little childhood that's kind of a you know it's kind of a cliche but it works and uh uh, i was like i bet there's a lot of jump scares but it's what it sounds like it's way more creative than that no it's it's just the way they get into it like this is like it's like uh paul's daughter when he she went to go see you know godzilla and you know account kong with you guys like seeing that from a young perspective like Imagine if you didn't have any friends, so you made up a friend, okay? And this friend tells you to do all these crazy things, and it's like, well, he he's not like he's not doing me any wrong, he's not doing me any harm. He really cares about me, but he's asking this little girl, and if you could see that little girl back there, she's like, well, we're just playing a game, you know? And I have to write all these checks, I have to get all these things on the list that he asked me to get, but he's asking her to do like really dangerous stuff, like and it's bad. And you would think because like, and it's funny how imaginary friends are like ghosts you know they all ghosts have unfinished business that's why they don't completely cross over so of course they're not going to go for the adults because adults are obviously not going to believe in a spiritual entity like something beyond them so who do you go to you go to children because children you know they're so impressionable they believe anything and they they see something cool they're like oh man this is so awesome but in this movie i mean like her imaginary friend was just like telling this little girl, like, you know, I have her now. And then if you want her back, you're going to have to literally come back to where we left off before. And it's and like I said, I want to dive into it so badly because you guys need to see this movie. It, it goes so deep within like the realms of everything that we think that like it, it's like childhood. You know, they uh If you've ever seen the movie Tag, and this is based on a true story, yeah, about friends who literally have been playing a game of Tag since they were little kids, and now they're adults, and they're still playing it. And the tagline, huh, funny, right, (laughs) in the movie is, we didn't 
stop playing because we got old. We got old because we stopped playing. And that was, and that touched according with me just like this. It's like, you know what, how many times have we like, because we're adults and we, you know, we have things to do and, you know, we got wives and children and all this other stuff. But it's like when we're a moment alone and we see our collection of action figures or comics or whatever, like how many times do we like sat alone and said, dude, like, I remember I used to read this. Or I used to watch this movie when I was a kid. Like, this it's, is great. It's one of the biggest problems I have. Like, you know, because I have, uh, you know, young children. Of course. And, and you know, they want to play. And yeah. I'm like. Like I have like no imagination anymore, right? You know, and it's it's really frustrating yeah. because you know they they want to play and they want to do these things. And I remember you know having Transformers and setting up bases with GI Joe, making a fort, right? make you know making all this stuff, and that's what they want to do. But uh, th I'm just like I I gotta do the dishes, right? Yeah. You know, like it's, it's, it's frustrating. Yeah, but. and it sucks because it's like you know when you're a kid, the world is just not even passing you by. It's just like this. You know, it's just like slow and everything's fun. But when you become an adult, it just, it sucks. And it's like, well, no like, time. yeah, like no Paul time. said, just this, no just this morning, my, my son, he's got new shoes and he was showing me how he can run like a tiger. <laughs> dad, dad, you know, dad, check right? it out. You know, I'm like, that's it's awesome. Right? Yeah, you could totally run like a tiger. Cause he's like, yeah, tigers, they, 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 they jump like this and right. what, you know, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's good. You know? Victor, it, sound, it sounds like <laughs> this like movie, you do it. Imaginary, really, really. You said it struck a chord with you, but it sounded oh, like it dude. really resonated with oh, you. Oh, dude, like you guys, if you guys get time ever, you guys need to w watch this movie. It can be a little scary. I wouldn't recommend it to children. That I mean, like PG it's, 13, it, it is right? PG, it is PG 13, but you know, but it sounds like a hard PG 13. It is. It, I, I mean, Yes, I know oh, this kids. Is PG thirteen. Yeah, yes, yeah, PG thirteen. Oh, wow. That's what I said too. I thought it was going to be rated R, but no, it was PG thirteen. So what, I mean, well, I had an interesting on the next uh, Weird Cinema episode. I think, uh, or my, the last week's one. Uh, Icky, Icky and I were talking. Icky was totally anti PG thirteen horror movies, and I was like, I hey, thought that I was the same. You way. know, they gotta be. They gotta serve as a as a gateway to you know to the next generation of, of scary movie fans. That's where Fair. they gotta start because you know they can't get access legally to your uh, to your r-rated movies unless you got a very uh, lenient parent but uh you know they got to start somewhere and then that could pave the way if I, they could do them well just like they could do r-rated uh, scare movies well i do i do agree with him on that yeah it is and though i don't but believe no, in the it, gateway no, thing is just totally anti-pg-13 no, no i'm yeah. the, i'm the same no, way you are oh believe but, me but, me and him are on the same page i do believe that all horror movies should be rated r there should be no you know training wheels for this if you're gonna go in go in all the but way it sounds like this is an exception yes mm -hmm. but but like i said man this one barely a pg-13 oh, movie trust me if they just go a little bit like extra they, couple drops of blood yeah, here if they, if, they, if, they, if they turned up the volume they would have literally uh, Literally done it for real, bro. Victor. It sounds like this is an early candidate for your top ten movies oh, of dude, the year. You, you guys have got to see this. Oh. It, you, when you see this, you got to tell me because you will love it. Trust oh, me. Oh, Victor, man, uh, dude, I, I dig, I dig the passion, man. Awesome, it's awesome. Re it's really good. Like I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna have to keep my eyes for this one. Hit streaming, or if there's still it, it, some matinees. Uh, more to come here on big screens and TV streams. But first, we got some words from Redemption Shield. Have you noticed the ever-alarming 400,000 cell towers that have gone up in the United States alone? How about the electronics that reside in every room of our homes and Wi-Fi that runs 24-7? 5G cell phones are carried in our pockets hours on end. Common complaints are ringing in the ear, sleep deprivation, palpitations, headaches, memory loss, and so much more. Redemption Shield is on the cutting edge of offering products that protect your family from electromagnetic and microwave radiation. Start protecting yourself now. Go to redemptionshield.com and get grounded and shielded today. Use code GFBS and save 10%. There you go. You heard what the ad said. Go to gfbestsource.com at the bottom of the home page. Click the link to go to the click the link on the shield to go over to Redemption Shield and order today. All right. So got some street upcoming new releases that I kind of run down here. Curious if any of these will catch your eyes. We kind of already touched on a couple of them here. So uh, notable streaming releases here. So this is what I got. Three Body Problem that is streaming on Netflix, and Paul has already covered that. 
Uh, 100 Days to Indie. This is streaming on Netflix and Paramount+. Plus. Uh, so if you're from, I kind of covered NASCAR full speed on here, the kind of docu-series interviewing uh, kind of like a season worth of races with various NASCAR drivers. And Netflix also has that with F1 with Drive to Survive. Awesome, awesome docu-series on Netflix. So now they got this with IndyCar, 100 Days to Indy, all about drivers on their season of races leading up to the biggest race of the year for them, the Indianapolis 500. Uh, season two is actually just under a month away as well. Uh, a Gentleman in Moscow. Streaming on Netflix Plus about a Russian count who is spared execution after the Russian Revolution, but is forced to live under house arrest for decades in an attic of an opulent hotel, and starring Ian, Ian McGregor and Mary Elizabeth Winstead. I do, I do want to see this just because, actually, uh, to, quick fact, these two are actually in a relationship together in real life. So Aren't I, they married, right? They're not married. Oh, they're not they're married. a boyfriend and girlfriend, and I want to see how they act together because they act together in Birds of Prey, which I thought was really cool. So That's right. So I wanted to see how they act within this movie. This is going to be interesting. Next up, uh, we Were the Lucky Ones, streaming series on Hulu, starring Joey King and Logan Lerman as members of a Polish-Jewish family torn apart during World War II. And it's executive produced by Ben Affleck and Matt Damon mm. behind the camera there. Yes. So I, once I saw that, I'm like, all right, that gives me all the cred I need. If they're behind this, I got to add this to my queue to watch. Uh, I've been hearing a lot of good buzz for this next one here. I do not have Apple TV+, Plus, but it's a two-part documentary called Steve with an exclamation point. Yeah. Two-part uh, documentary all about the, the life and career of the one and only Steve Martin. And I've been hearing nothing but glowing praise for this. I wanted to see this. I don't have Apple TV+. Plus myself and i wanted to see it because i love me some steve martin dude he's hilarious one more apple tv plus uh series sugar and it's about a private investigator in los angeles played by colin farrell who was hired to investigate the disappearance of a legendary hollywood producer's granddaughter uh notable new theatrical movies got three of them here monkey man it's in theaters now I still want to see that it's where an anonymous young man unleashes a campaign of vengeance against the corrupt leaders who murdered his brother and continue to systematically victimize the poor and the powerless i want to see this i love revenge movies man also in theaters the first omen it opened last weekend a young woman a young American woman is sent to Rome to begin a life of service to the church, but encounters a darkness that causes her to question her faith and uncovers a terrifying conspiracy that hopes to bring about the birth of evil incarnate. I saw the trailer for this. Here's an R-rated horror movie. Exactly. Uh, and this one, it opens well, opens tonight with a couple of uh, evening uh, sneak peek showings, but officially full open tomorrow. Civil War. Uh, yes. Yes. A journey across a dystopian future America following a team of military embedded journalists as a race against time to reach D.C. before rebel factions descend upon the White House. If I have enough life left in me tonight, I may try and catch this tonight. We'll see. Oh, gosh. Uh, guys got a pick of the week from all those? I mean, I want to see Civil War. Uh, and I want to see Monkey Man because I love me the revenge genre. If you can't, like, if you can't, you beat them, get even man just civil war even. for me civil oh, war for me saying. that the trailers for that have me all in on that just yeah. crazy dystopian S civil war should be good but oh. i i i am probably going to be a little bit uh upset with this movie because i can already tell even with the timing mm -hmm. they're going to try to make this out to be a trump movie you never oh, know man. guy critics will come at it at a certain angle yeah i would be the director i'm sure he's a liberal and he's going to try to make it so like the president is like trump in office and now we're in a civil war because he's taken you know he's going to be a dictator going against the american civilization which is a so they're gonna be, i mean honestly you think they may push their own personal uh, yeah. politics in there yeah they're gonna they, they, they got their i mean they are they already do. did that with snl so i mean it would be kind of hard boiled well. to see that they would do that with this i, I mean i i still think it's going to be a good movie mm. but i can already see that you know it's going to be a... They're, they're, it's going to be biased. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be a leftist, stupid... Well, I, 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 interpretation. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try, it, it wouldn't be the first time. I'm going to really try, try and see it this weekend. I'll make sure to report back uh, two weeks from today on our next show. Oh, I'm going to see it myself. So, All <laughs> I mean, right. I'm going to see it. Some GFBS plugs here as we wind down for uh, some awesome shows we did earlier this week. Uh, make sure to check out our interview with Dennis Jensdead from the Spirit of America Bike and Car Show that happened uh, this past uh, Monday. No, excuse me, Wednesday, uh, yesterday, talking about an awesome vintage auto show hitting the Lara Center this weekend. That no, Dennis. 
Uh, no, oh, Gail. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep, Gail Jensen. Uh, uh, yeah, Dennis was one of the other people that was supposed yeah. to be joining him. That's right. Yeah, we had we had a little little. little yeah, uh, they had some uh, uh, rotating uh, people in and out on that one that were supposed to make it but didn't. But yeah, Gail Jensen. Thank you for the correction, Paul. I don't think it's Jensen. I think just we'll we'll just go with Gail. Gail. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> now, now. That's her name. Gail. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Dale. Dale failed. Dale failed. And we'll go with that. That's my last name. But uh, <laughs> but no. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, Spirit of America Bike and Car Show. They're talking. Gail's talking all about it. It's happening this weekend at the Lair Center. We here at GFBS will be there to help cover it. So that's kind of like your great uh, preview to get you all set up for it. Also, check out yesterday's episode of Mixed Culture with Roosevelt and Kimmy. They have on, I guess, a local one-man band sensation, the one and only Pete Moss. Uh, yeah, the, he was there jamming out with some tunes there on Mixed Culture. Check that out. Finally, tune in to an all-new Fork Sports Highway to get the final word on the NCAA basketball championship games and the latest in the NBA, NHL, and MLB. Those are just a few of over a dozen shows we do every week here on GFBS. Just search GFBS on your favorite podcast and social media apps to stay up to date. Mm. All right, guys, quick takes. What have you watched this past week or plan on watching soon that we have yet to talk about? Uh, Paul, let's start it off with you. All right, well, um, it's actually on, you know, like the last few shows, I haven't really had a lot to talk about, but it's been mm. jam-packed lately. Yeah, so, you know, with that, that body three, two, one, or body problem, whatever. Three body problem. Three, three body po <laughs> problem, watching that. Um, going out to see, you know, Kong X Godzilla. Um, but uh, I just wrapped up the season of Shogun. Oh, yeah. And Shogun on Hulu Man. is awesome oh, um as i say when you reviewed on your uh, our last show two weeks ago of like the first i think you're through the first half of the episodes by then and you were super high on what the rest had and yeah. had to offer there now i mean this is one of the ones like again my wife wouldn't like because you have to read yeah you know it's, all, it's pretty much all subtitled but That's the, the, the story the storyline of this and the acting in this is just awesome oh yeah this <laughs> this show is i i would recommend anybody to watch mm. this show and the honestly the season finale like the last episode oh yeah it was like you wouldn't have expected to happen what happened oh no and again this is one make sure your kids are not in the room yeah because it is pretty <laughs> graphic man <Yeah. laughs> bigger but, you saw this too or some oh i loved it in like paul said you wouldn't expect for them to do what they had done, <laughs> and, and it's like okay, and and I I want to say that this is my list on Hulu. <laughs> I want to say that this is pretty historically. I mean, not like a star as far as like the story mm. itself, but historically accurate as far as I think like the the wardrobes, yeah. the the way that they, you know, the, the culture, yeah, all that kind of stuff. I I think that they did a pretty good job of making this pretty accurate yeah they did they did they, they definitely did their homework and these guys were perfect to a detail yeah. it's a it's a it's a great story it's great acting um i would recommend anybody watch this and the sword but play it, it sounds but like if, we're, if you were to do a top 10 series or tv shows of the year it sounds like this would be your runaway winner almost yeah i, I would or actually at least run away top three <laughs> i would actually put this uh, above uh three body problem oh wow i, I because, really Three body problem like that's sci-fi. This one is more historical. It's really, I don't know it's if really. I would say historical, I, but I, it, I it, say... you, you, the the characters mm. themselves that are in the show, mm. you really get to know them a lot better. So you, it's, you, it's, you know, I think of watching movies like reading a book, yeah. but I, but I hate reading. Yeah. So if I have a movie that's like reading a book mm. that I don't have to read. Mm then I consider that a really good movie. And this could be a movie, but yeah. they, you know, they, it would be a really long mm. movie. Yes. <laughs> Very <laughs> they, they really long sure movie. This, they make sure to let this one breathe. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, but it's grounded, though, and that's what makes it so good. Like, and unlike, I do love reading books, uh, it, but this one, I mean, just the characters, like you said, you really get to know a lot about them, and it's, it's so grounded. I know a lot of people don't like reading subtitles, go figure, but... If you do, if I love it, and trust me, you're gonna get a lot out of it more than what you got out of something else. Trust me. There, there's there's a lot of really fantastic production that yes. went into this show. Yes, and I got to give props to the director, whoever yeah. made it. Um, ever, I would recommend this to anybody. 
FX Boss Show no expense. Awesome. I forgot to add it to my queue uh, two weeks ago when we were last talking about it. I just did it now where I'm like, oh, yeah, I got to see this because I just remember when you were talking about it two weeks ago, I'm like, this sounds like must-see stuff. Oh, it's yep. so it, it is definitely a must-see. <sighs> Any other quick takes, Paul? Um, uh, nothing I can think of offhand. I, uh, we're going to the doing the remote at the Spirit of America car show this weekend, but other than that, no, I, I can't really think of anything. Yeah, looking forward to seeing some old school cars and bikes this weekend. Yeah. Uh, I'll jump in next here. Uh, uh, I'm almost finally wrapped up with season four of Dark Side of the Ring uh, TV docu series. I had a couple recent episodes on uh, Bam Bam Bigelow and his just his rise and fall, and then I'm in the middle of WCW Bash of the Beach 2000. I won't even get into the details on that, but it's like well, a lot of people associate it with the quick downward spiral of WCW. Uh, a and E, they're continuing their amazing biography series. I think they're taking a break. He's going to come back in a couple of months. I don't know how they have the time to pump these out week after week. I mean, they must have multiple teams. So they did one on Roman Reigns. Mm. Uh, that was a really good watch. Uh, Paul Heyman actually uh, directed it. Oh, uh, his shit. his manager. So oh, and shit. he kind of narrates uh, throughout. He kind of jumps in uh, 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 intermittently throughout to kind of and they have all these in depth interviews uh, with Roman Reigns throughout it and his oh. family. And that was actually it's not just like a cookie cutter puff piece just praising his uh, his success in recent years but uh you know he actually tells a lot of there's a lot of new enlightening details about his uh his struggles and how he wasn't happy that you know he couldn't get the crowd behind him until recent years so mm -hmm. highly recommend tracking that one down to watch uh a and e biography on roman reigns and uh then the, the then the last thing i have is uh X-Men 97, mm -hmm. keeping up with that. Uh, maybe I'll save going to detail on it until the next episode, until Victor's all caught up. I know episode five just dropped last night. I saw episodes three and four. Mm -hmm. Episode three was a Jubilee episode. Yes. And that was actually pretty interesting. I oh. actually thought where they go with there is pretty good. Well, how they, yeah, she gets trapped in a certain scenario and how she busts out. Uh, just, we get creative with it and actually, and, and then the back half of that episode, they, you know, you thought Storm was done after her uh, early exit in episode two, oh. but they find a way to keep her in the mix. Uh, and this, yeah, so good stuff with episode three. Uh, ep episode four, uh, no, excuse me, that was episode four. Episode three was all about Jean Grey dealing with the cliffhanger they had at the end of episode two. Wait a yeah. second, two Jean Greys? Is I there know. a clone? I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Mad we got a Madeline Pryor coming on here. So. Yeah, and uh, it sounds like Mr. Sinister may be, may or may not be involved. Uh. So, yes, yes, yeah. Episodes three and four delivered for me. If you could say a, a Jubilee episode delivered for me in this new X-Men 97 run, then we're all, I, I think we're in good good graces here for the rest of the season so oh, they're doing pretty good so i mean they keep it up <laughs> yeah maybe we'll do a little bit more of a deep dive in the last episode and finally i saw wrestlemania 40 last weekend too much wrestling last weekend uh it was like six hours of wrestling each night if you include the two-hour pre-show on saturday and sunday somehow found time to watch it all cody rhodes finished his story became the new uh wwe uh, universal champion Great match, great storytelling, five stars all the way. Uh, Damian Priest cashed in his money in the bank to defeat Drew McIntyre, who just won the title from Seth Rollins in a great moment. Uh, so many, uh, Sami Zayn ending Gunther's record long intercontinental title run. So lots of great moments throughout. It's, this is definitely, I want to say, upper tier of WrestleManias, of all 40 WrestleManias. I can say early, early uh, thoughts. It's probably a top five WrestleMania of all time. So oh, that's, that's yeah. high, high praise. But Victor, I'll throw it to you. Oh man, it's, man, there's a lot of stuff happening this year, and it was like, and I'm telling you, man, it was going fast. I mean, I got to see Sydney Sweeney, uh, literally in a movie called Immaculate, uh, was very very good and i gotta give her props man she did not hold back in this movie uh immaculate really was a great movie i mean i'll say this i i will not want to be a nun because oh, those, no. those those women don't play <laughs> like, oh, they're, sc they're scary as hell and they they don't play none of that crap so i mean that was just a scary scary movie in the in for the religious sense um i gotta give it up of course to uh x-men of course for being so amazing uh i mean they're really do they're doing it 97 yo. yeah man they're doing it real and they're they're keeping it going and so i appreciate that very heavily because man i i, I really want to watch that but i won't support disney so if one of you wants to just give me your code for like a week yes. I'll, I'll, I'll smash out x-men and then i'll just cancel it <laughs> <laughs> i give you my i ask my sister and she can give it to you <laughs> <laughs> like I said, yeah, Disney Disney's gone off the rails over the years, but man, they they did it right with X Men. So I shout out to them. Hopefully, they do Spider Man next. Um, I gotta say, uh, t television shows like show like Shogun. Oh my gosh, man! Like. <laughs> 
I didn't think they would go as far as they did. I'm not going to tell you what happened because, like, like I said, you got to tune in for yourself because, Lord have mercy, those guys really did it up right, boy. And I got to give it up, of course, to uh, the people over at Warner Brothers. Um, even though Warner Brothers and Discovery, I don't care for Discovery because it's a nature channel. It has known nothing about making movies, but I will give it up to them for, of course, the Godzilla thing. Even though it did have a little ifs and hands there, it... It still did its, it still did its you know proper justice, so I'll it, give it to them. They'll, they'll get hit every once in a while, they, right? They, they will, and you know it, maybe if they didn't have Discovery on their backs, they would have the freedom to do so, like they've done for seventy five years and a lot more. I really got to talk about, of course, the movie that is coming out very very soon. My boy Caesar, although he is not in this one, it is beyond his control now. Planet of the Apes, boys. That's right. Planet of the Apes, or Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. And literally, this is going to be it's awesome. It's coming soon. Oh, it's coming very what, soon. What, a month Oh, yeah. And I'm really, really excited because, oh, I want to see, I want to see the, I want to see them all de defeat this evil king. Uh, Initris Elba is going to be playing one of the apes in there, and I can already hear his voice in there. I mean, just raw, Gosh. angry passion. And I, I love it yourself. Oh, I mean, his voice, man, it resonates. I know, right? Oh, I just... It, there's what else can that man do? Like he's a DJ, he's an actor, he's like African he's, hunter, safari hunter, right? Like he's a badass. Like what else can this man do? He's so fucking amazing. And I gotta Star get. Trek, oh, I, got, I got I got a YouTube clip I gotta show you guys after oh, the show. I, I oh, got a feeling I know which one you're talking yeah, about. Is it a yeah. music video? No, it's oh, no. Like it was the, when he goes to uh, the coffee shop. Yeah, oh. and he orders. Yeah, he shows us the sauce. <laughs> yeah, okay, he did show us this. Yes, yeah. and, and it's so it's great. So funny. Count to ten, see it again. Yeah. Uh. But and I also got to give it up to. This is the. 30, that's what I'm talking about, 30th anniversary of Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. That's, they're actually re-releasing it in theaters, right? Yes, yeah. and I'm very excited. Anyone who says they don't like the prequels, I say, Jacques, sir. Double-bladed lightsabers. Come on. Yep, like, yep. seriously. Go ahead and like the prequels, Victor. Come on. No, come on. Anyone, come on. Double-bladed lightsabers. Double-bladed lightsabers. Oh, boo yourselves. Come on. I'm just playing. I'm oh, just I know. playing. Oh, I yeah. know, I know. <laughs> Double-bladed lightsabers. And Ray Parker, if any of you don't not know who that man is, that man is a master of martial arts. He not only was in X-Men, the first 2000 live-action movie as Toad, but he came back many... But before he did Toad, he did Darth Maul for the 1990 of course, classic that it is today. And oh, he was amazing. And he also played what? Snake Eyes in two G.I. Joe. May when, I think, is when it's coming out, the 30th anniversary, yes. the re-release, right? Yes, yep. and I'm very excited to see it because, I mean, come on. There it's, you go. I, I'm ready for it. Nerd Let's out, go. man. Nerd out. Oh, I'm excited, man. Star are, are Wars. Are you going man. to a big Star Wars rope? Oh, hell yeah. There you go. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to try to find my other one. I can't find my other one at this point. I don't know what I did with it. I think the last time I wore it, it was you're going to bring a lightsaber? I, I'm going to find the expensive one I get. Yes, the $200 oh, model. Oh, yeah. I'm going to find the Yoda one, and I want to bring that one to oh. the theater because I want to glow up the night, boy. I want to glow up the night. Well, hey, I'm happy that you're happy. Oh, hey, fair enough, All man. Right. All right. Well, hey, guys, this is great. We banged it out here. Thank you, everyone, for joining us live for all future episodes. You guys have anything before we wrap up here? We want to make sure we got everything covered? Well, I oh, I got, I got one thing. Mm -hmm. Because I just realized this. I don't know if we can see it on the screen. But got, got a little bit of a buddy there. Oh, yeah, so this is our little thing from Rap, Raptor PCS. But I just realized that this is basically Jenenba from Dragon Ball Z. Oh. Not a hardcore Dragon Ball. I saw oh, the Cell Saga, yeah, but I do not yep, recognize this, this that. This looks just like Jenenba from he Dragon Ball Z. We have to pay Brock a visit. You got a little copyright infringement going on there, Brock? No. <laughs> yeah. Jenenba. Jenenba. Oh, so, gosh. Anyway. He does kind of look like him a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. Well, 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 hey, we'll be like, hey, Brock, we know your inspirations. No, no, we yeah. love it. We have Raptors awesome. They've, they've helped us out a lot here at the studio. All right. Well, with that. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in and joining us on big screens and TV streams. We welcome you to join us every other Thursday at 1 p.m. here on GFBS. Find past episodes by subscribing to Grand Fork's Best Source everywhere you find podcasts, or you can even search big screens and TV streams on your favorite podcast app to get instant access. Make sure to like, share, and follow Grand Fork's Best Source and hit that notification bell so you get the alerts for whenever we go live. 
Many thanks for having us part of your day. We really, really appreciate it. Victor, thank you, man. Thank Bringing you. it as always. Thank you, guys. And I always enjoy nerding out with you guys. And remember, if you want to nerd out with me and Paul and Dale, then you got to go to Facebook, Twitter, however you're going to get this show. Just go online and find us because we want to nerd out with you. And don't forget, summer movies are coming up. So get your popcorn, your girlfriend, or whoever you got and go see the movies. Get your popcorn ready. That's right. You hear that popping? Let's yes. pop up to the movies. Many thanks to rockin' and rollin' producer Paul. Always our favorite. <laughs> Always our favorite. We'll see you all in two weeks as, hey, we're going to keep that uh, summer blockbuster uh, movie show theme going. We're I think we're going to be talking about Civil War. Oh, hell talking yeah. Talking more X-Men 97. Hell yeah. Uh, and so much more. Tune in two weeks to find out. All right, we'll see you then, everyone. Have a great rest of your week. Goodbye. See ya.